Okay, WHO uh, uh, road, uh, roadmap for the next 10 years was announced uh, recently, and uh, they uh, were looking back at the um, nine previous years of work they had done, and it was uh, uh, very relevant to see, uh, to find out uh, two important facts. One uh, relevant fact is that the NTD interventions that was done uh, was uh, um, estimated in terms of benefit uh, for individual uh, affected individual in terms of uh, mm, uh, mm, let's say uh, dollars, twenty five dollars per dollar invested in preventive, preventive chemotherapy. Uh, these are numbers, but we should translate uh, this in terms of uh, uh, quality of life and benefit for the patient. So, uh, which kind of intervention they have done? Uh, it, was on, uh, it was done on uh, um, health management and uh, organization in the countries considered, and also in terms of uh, um, uh, therapy management. So, uh, what, what, uh, if this is uh, if this reorganization and care about uh, the general health, uh, uh, let's say management and uh, organization, are we uh, do we uh, need new drugs or the drugs we have nowadays are, are uh, let's say enough and we can implement somehow uh, the the what we already have. Um, the answer is that we need uh, to uh, provide innovation in this field because uh, uh, and to, to consider that this is uh, the Leishmaniasis, Leish this is an infection that deserves to be considered as all the other neglected tropical disease um, uh, to, uh, and deserve innovation and we, we have to do that, we have to bring innovation in this area. And, uh, and so, uh, but uh, um, thinking in specific, specifically uh, about uh, leishmaniasis, we know that this uh, is um, not a unique disease, but we have different manifestations of the same disease, and we have cutaneous and visceral and mucocutaneous. But, um, and uh, also we know we are in presence of people infected but asymptomatic. So they um, do not uh, uh, show symptoms, and uh, they do not show uh, they you know they, they are not uh, uh, sick in some way, uh, but uh, they um, uh, bring and and have the parasite basically, and uh, um, and uh, and so another consideration is that uh, we um, we have this uh, aspect uh, related to. Um, reservoir of infection. In this case, uh, this is a vector-borne disease and uh, dogs, so um, domestic animals, but in particular dogs, are, are a reservoir of the infection. They are affected by canine leishmaniasis. And uh, this uh, aspect is uh, uh, relevant. In fact, uh, we consider if in, in, uh, in the sense that uh, from the therapeutic intervention intervention point of view, we need to keep in mind this, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, continuous presence of, of some reservoir in the, um, uh, close to, to humans. Uh, and, and in fact, and the other aspect is that if we look at the world distribution map, in particular, let's say, one of these visual leishmaniasis, we see that this uh, infection is distributed in the southern part of the world, but climate changes is, uh, let's say, um, changing also the, distribu the general distribution. And so, um, uh, and the epidemiology. So, uh, what we, uh, I would like to point out is that we have, of course, 90, a lot of, a huge number of countries affected, 98 countries. This is a number and 2 million cases um, per year. But, uh, uh, and these numbers today are more relevant to us because we have the experience of COVID-19. So, we, we understand what it means, uh, 2 million cases uh, of infection, uh, of people infected. 
just uh, but a part of that look at the coincidence coincidence map what is it this is a map in which we uh, put, uh, we overlap the distribution this is the case of mediterranean countries um, and and uh, so we have a superimposition of the human let's say uh, infection uh, compare um, superimposed with the uh, canine leishmaniasis that are represented by the bar. So this tell, tells us that we are in presence of a, a one health problem. So uh, we, when we cure and we want to cure human leishmaniasis, we also need to keep in mind that we have a reservoir, we have dogs, and so we need also to cure. Uh, this, uh, if we want to do, uh, to make a, a full, uh, you know, uh, coverage of the, and the elimination of the infection, we need also to consider this aspect. So it is a typical one health uh, problem, and in principle, it would require one health approach. Uh, coming, uh, going uh, to the focusing on the therapy, on drugs and therapy, um, there are uh, a few, uh, there are important aspects to consider. I will, my the speaker uh, and, uh, after me will, uh, will talk also more deeper inside, uh, will go deeper inside a few aspects, in particular clinical aspects. But what I would like to say that uh, we have uh, a low number of drugs uh, and these drugs are not, uh, let's say, um, you, you know, add problems because uh, they uh, developed resistance, uh, some of them are toxic, mm, some of them like uh, mutetrosine, for example, they come from a repurposing approach and uh, because they were, it was used as anti-cancer and uh, uh, here it is, but it, it is the only oral drug that we have nowadays and uh, uh, it's uh, relevant to consider this in terms of uh, uh, a general repurposing approach that uh, uh, all people would like to, to, to take. Uh, but how to respond to the quest for new leads and drugs? So we need to consider that we have new targets. Innovation is brought through new targets consideration and we have new targets available, new technologies. Some of them are very costly and uh, so expensive and uh, we can ask ourselves how can we approach this kind of uh, new technologies like uh, uh, omics technologies, uh, um, uh, artificial intelligence, for example, it's very, you know, uh, up to date nowadays, but it's also really uh, very important. And uh, I to put technologies, uh, there are um, considering that we are in a global research network uh, uh, Nowadays, it is possible to be in this situation, so we can also consider access to important uh, uh, centers uh, that are available for, for uh, at a low cost or no cost for interesting projects. So we need to also, for example, in Europe, we have some of them, um, but these are available also in other parts of the world. What uh, I would like to show today is an example of our of one uh, project that we have developed in our uh, uh, laboratory network of labs, uh, in particular from the one uh, previous project, and we have now a follow-up of that, and uh, in collaboration with a U.S. company uh, working on artificial intelligence. And what we have done is uh, was to consider a, a database of approximately uh, 500 compounds, and these compounds were tested against six parasites, including Leishmania, Leishmania uh, parasites, and panosomes, and mycobacterium tuberculosis. So we did a broad uh, spectrum testing. And uh, uh, and also we evaluated the, the, the let's say the Armetov uh, properties uh, cell based and uh, uh, all these numbers let's say and properties are uh, character were char characterized were determined experimentally but uh, um, and uh, at the same time we in parallel we did a um, evaluation clusterization and an, uh, organization of the project in terms of uh, data analysis and here is the workflow i'm not going deeper inside but please check see the starting point it is a database 
uh, and we did a screening, uh, we performed screening and then data analysis up to the identification of uh, an in vivo uh, compound that, is val uh, that was uh, valuable for, for in vivo studies. So in particular, the library was uh, first clusterized, so uh, device, uh, so analyzed in terms of uh, chemical structures and scaffolds. And uh, we uh, finally uh, were able to uh, clusterize based on molecular properties. Uh, this helped us to recognize scaffold that was, that is of course very important in terms of uh, next step uh, evaluation, results evaluation. Here is the heat map uh, reporting on the left, uh, where all this red is, <laughs> you can see all this red spot is, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, on the right, we have all the ARME properties that we have evaluated. And uh, we were able to um, select uh, some, uh, scaff some compounds uh, belonging to specific scaffolds that are reported here and from here we develop a new library uh, through uh, medicinal chemistry classical approach and we perform the same analysis in order to um, validate our findings and in fact uh, we tested again and confirmed that the new compounds were less uh, were you know less toxic and uh, um, more active and we were able to identify one compound in particular and some derivatives, but this is the best one. And this was, um, let's say, we tested in, um, in vivo. Um, so uh, this was, uh, all this work was performed use on the basis of this, uh, um, let's say, um, uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, method. It, it was a ma machine learning method, method that were utilized combined with, uh, with uh, um, isoboot screening because all the screening was performed with uh, uh, the um, HTS platform. In, in particular, in, um, we use the screening port uh, um, in, at Fraunhofer in Germany, uh, in Hamburg. So uh, we, uh, this was the final result of our work, but this is just an example of uh, what, we, what it can be done using this kind of technologies. Another important uh, technology that can be um, we have used uh, recently is uh, um, proteomics, uh, mass spectrometry proteomics, and uh, this is very helpful. This is just an, um, an example, but uh, of the final let's say network that we could uh, achieve. But in the case of miltefazine uh, module um, treatment of uh, Leishmania cell promastigot in this case. And uh, but what can omics uh, help be helpful to 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 do? Which ki kind of advancement can bring? Uh, we know that we of course have information about new target, uh, about the mechanism of our uh, new compounds or drugs, and also this opens the way to uh, the identification of biomarkers. And we and uh, in this way we can enter into the field of diagnostics. Right. So, um, okay, just to uh, uh, focus also to drug uh, reporting, this is another solution for 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 facing uh, drug discovery problems and uh, bringing innovation. Uh, looks like uh, not not so much innovative to start from uh, uh, in the field of drug reporting, but. Uh, we need to consider that despite the, con the, the concept, the basic concept is to start from, a, let's say, a, a known drug and to uh, try to let's, uh, recycle this new drug in a different field, in a different therapeutic field. Uh, this uh, requires not, uh, this requires some work. So we are in this, for example, in this picture, you see the full discovery uh, process. 
And uh, okay, in principle, we, we think that we can start very, very advanced. We are very, very advanced with respect to uh, a heat and lead search, but uh, we need to be very careful. And we have a demonstration recently with the COVID-19. We did this. We tried to uh, repurpose new, new, comp new drug, but uh, need to be careful because uh, um, uh, some, uh, you know, some uh, the, the drug profile has uh, uh, to be reviewed carefully and maybe uh, it is necessary to modify something. Of course, it is faster in principle than starting from uh, it and lead uh, optimization. Uh, but uh, um, but still, some some uh, uh, work has to be done. So this is the, the some considerations that come that come from recent experience. Uh, now I, in principle, I could talk about clinical landscape, but uh, uh, I know that uh, we have the, my, the next speaker. Uh, will uh, from will will talk about specifically about the clinical landscape. So I will skip uh, my slide about this. <clears throat> uh, coming to uh, the final slide, in which I can focus on the some actions that are ongoing at the European level, and we have many of them. And now we have the starting of the new um, Horizon Europe, so there will be more. Uh, we hope. And this is for, uh, to thank all the, let's say, all the collaborators uh, belonging to this group and also to other to new collaboration we have started from that. And this to remember that we have a lot of work to do, too many roles not taken yet. So thank you for your attention.